This is a story that has unfolded for more than a thousand years. A story about an ancient castle that has endured the test of time. A noble and very influential Italian family constructed a glorious castle in the 10th century. It has played as an instrumental role in the historical development of this area throughout history. Various figures have taken it over at least 20 times and used it as a base to rule over the underlying kingdom. With each seizure, the subsequent owners remodeled and reconstructed the castle to their taste. They added new sections and transformed it into a more modern era of rule. When walking through it, the different time periods can be seen on the walls. One last takeover occurred in 1711, when the Limolino family seized the castle. Since they had already ruled this area for so long, it was only natural that they would also take this place by force. Their final reconstruction transformed it into the structure we see today. Furthermore, they developed a wine producing business in and around the castle, producing world class wines for centuries to come. This particular castle has the longest lasting history of anything we have documented before on the channel. Throughout the documentary, we will go more in-depth on its history and the architectural features. Morning, everybody. Welcome back to another episode on the Bros of DK. I'm Leslie, and today I'm bringing you another castle from the country of Italy. And I'm exploring today with my good friend. Hey guys, Moreno Good to see from you back. Explomo. With Leslie together. Yes, it's a very long time since we made another documentary together, and I'm very excited to have him here with me again. And Jeroen is also exploring with us, Morning. like always. <laughs> so. We were with the van here today in Italy. We slept here. It's still night time out and uh, we're gonna make our way to an abandoned castle right now. Okay, you ready, Moreno? You got all your stuff? Yes, finally. Finally, after half an hour. <laughs> all right, let's close my van. <laughs> yeah, and then we can go. Boom. There we go. Let's close this beauty. Now let's get on with the exploration. As you can see, I'm already wearing my traditional attire right now. I have my coat on, but my full outfit is in my backpack and that's for when we enter into the castle. Oh, I'm so excited to see this place. I especially went to Italy to just film this abandoned castle. So <laughs> it has to happen right now. The whole wall is collapsing to this side. <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> you good? I'm good. Okay, let's go. We are now on the main alleyway of the castle. Right, this used to be the main road where the owners of the castle used to drive up. First off with their horse carriages and later on 
with that cars. I think I just found an entrance into the castle. Let's go straight into the basement. Let's check that out. Roll through it. Oh. Let me check it out. Oops. I just found an entrance into the castle. It's pretty difficult as you can see, but this is gonna lead us inside of this enormous place. <laughs> oh, this looks funny. Can I give you the light one or not? Okay, now it's my turn. Because I still have my attire on. I think I'm gonna go feed first. Inside everybody, so let's start this exploration. As the last descendant of the Limonino family to live here, Carlos inherited all the wealth his family gained over the years. He met his lovely wife Beatrice early in life and the two married and built a beautiful life together. In their lifetime they expanded the business that their forefathers had established for them and grew it bigger than they could have ever imagined. In contrast to the previous generations Carlos and Beatrice had a relatively small family, occupying only a section of the castle, and had a few servants. After their children moved out to live in more urban areas, Carlos and his wife retired and closed their business. They also moved out of the castle after a couple of years, because it grew too big for them. This was almost four decades ago. For some time, they kept the house in pristine condition. However, after the death of their parents, the children lost interest in this masterpiece and left everything to decay with time. This masterpiece is the outcome of a thousand years worth of history and we will take you on the tour of it today. I'm so excited for this one. I got my brand new attire, custom made. And this is literally an 18th century attire, so you can get a representation of how these people dressed, how they lived in a castle like this, and let's make this one count. While going throughout this castle, we're gonna go from room to room and show you every single detail that this place has to behold. And we're gonna start off here in the dining room. This is an Italian castle, so the most important thing where we're going to start with is looking at the ceilings of this dining room. Have a look at the magnificent ceilings that they put in. It has been done by a famous Italian artist in 1860, but unfortunately I can't give you the name because I don't want to reveal the location of this castle. What first looks like crown molding and statues 
is actually just 3D artwork that has been made on the walls in 1860. Unfortunately, we can see already some cracks forming over there in the ceiling. It's cracking up and falling apart. And that's something that shouldn't happen to a castle like this. I don't understand why, but this place is not on the UNESCO heritage list. It should be in my opinion. It has so much history. At one point, in 1491, a man by the name, who I'm not gonna name, was poisoned in this place. And the Duke of the time took over the castle and lived in it for 200 years without being punished. That's the kind of history that contemplate in this place. <sighs> Look at this wonderful copper chandelier that's hanging here right above the table, suspended from the ceiling out of these two angels that we see over there. And this would be the dining table with a former family. The owner, the former owner, Mr. Carlos, used to have dinner at together with his family. I always try to imagine how this must have been like. These people sitting here around the table, having a nice dinner party, enjoying life. Wow. What a place. Right behind me here, we have some artifacts left behind. This wonderful piece of furniture, completely designed. We're going to see numerous paintings and artworks throughout this place. I already quite like this one. Two fishermen, probably in Lake Garda, here in Italy, working away. Oh, I see something else over here. Sort of a safe, but it's actually a storage place for all the keys for the castle. You can see all the keys will be hung up here. And it would be nicely sealed away and hidden from view. I also quite enjoy the wallpaper that I put in this place. And that's one nice fact about a castle and also grand manors and uh, other rich places. The former owners used to change out the wallpaper almost every single year to give an appearance of, of wealth and richness and just to give the room another look. Something that peasants of the time couldn't do. Wow. We can also see that the ivy nature is growing inside. It's literally growing through the wall into this place. That's actually fascinating and sad at the same time just growing through the walls and this must have probably been Mr. Carlos. You can see over here on the date that it has been made in 1909. So this uh, drawing is about 111 years old. Wow, A marble top, most definitely Italian marble. And then over here we can see more of nature creeping inside of this building and taking it over. Oh yeah, outside there are lots of peacocks that you are most likely gonna hear throughout the video. The peacocks are just something that we are gonna have to deal with throughout this video, but let's not get that down and let's just go further with this video. <laughs> On this cabinet over here, we can see carvings and they depict the history of this castle. Because you can see over here, there are grapes. And in 1771, when the last family took over this place, they turned it into a grape, into a wine production farm, actually, and a wine production castle. And that was uh, the last 200 years of history for this place. You can also see some musical instruments, I think, on this side. Oh no, this is grain from the fields. Wow. I love how they designed these cabinets such a meticulous way. There's unfortunately nothing in there anymore. And here we see a poison sprayer. I think this is to uh, numb bees, but I'm not 100% sure. 
Here in the corner of the room, we have a beautiful chassis long, a wonderful piece. Wow. Upholstery, this beige upholstery. And a peasant lady, I think, on the wall, praying. And then here in the corner of the room, we have this lovely, so uh, lovely fireplace, a stove, comfort stove. It says here on the front. Wow, hasn't been used in a long time. Oh, we already have some pictures over here as well, from the former owners. I saw her picture somewhere else throughout the castle as well. I'm going to try to find it somewhere in this video. And we have another picture of a lady over here. Let's see if I can focus on that. You can see her. Beautiful. Wow. And a deer carving as well here on the wall. With a depiction of the castle over here. Just wonderful. And also have a look at this beautiful clock face that we have over here. Carvings all over it. Every single number and plated with gold. Okay, I think I spent enough time showing this room. Let's now go further throughout this place. Let's open this beautiful door. Some rooms might be in a bit worse state, maybe a bit overthrown, like this one. This used to be a bedroom, most likely of a child, but I'm not 100% sure. We can see some dolls and some toys here. Yeah, we can safely assume that this used to be a bedroom of a child. And look where these children slept. Underneath these beautiful paintings. I see some clothing over here at the back in the cabinet. And these are some ladies clothing, as you can see. Just wonderful. Definitely of a younger child. Wow. And most likely the parents hung up all these artworks in her room. Some inscription, some writing. Here are some more pictures, some more former pictures of the castle. Here we can see it from a distance. Wow, that's just lovely. These are postcards of the castle. Faxing machine, so it has been used in the modern times as well. And one way you can see that the castle is very old. If everything like electricity has been added on later. You can see the cables, they are running around the door frame. Electricity doesn't function anymore, but everything has been added on later. Oh yes, here we see the lady that we just saw in the picture, I believe. Wow, she looks fabulous. More, another artwork here on the wall. Okay. There's a toilet room that I'm not gonna to show in detail for you all. And then we go to this room here at the end. And this used to be another bedroom, as you can see. Wow, wow, this immediately catches my attention. Look at these statues, these carvings of these babies made on the frame of the bed. That's just amazing. And they're even over here on top of the cabinet. I'm literally gonna go through this place <laughs> for a very, very long time, presumably an hour or more. So be prepared. We're gonna go on an adventure. Here's the fireplace for this room. And this room was multi-purpose. It also was used as a bureau. So maybe one of the older people that lived in this place used this room to conduct some work. Lots of pictures left here as well. Glasses of the former person. Wow, even a picture of a lady. 
another young man them on a vacation on the beach wow there's a color picture here they're sitting outside on a bench and this is a photo album everybody oh wow isn't that just wonderful here's the gate of the castle the front gate that we came in through this morning wow family pictures vacation pictures here's the same lady that we just saw in the picture in the room oh and this is the courtyard of the castle that i'm going to show you later Fascinating. Ah, this is the picture that we just saw. The picture of the lady. Wow. A study room where the former owner could conduct his work. And then we have these beautiful upholstery chairs here in the corner of the room. Now we can walk from the dining room straight through that drawer because that's gonna lead us into the courtyard. The courtyard has been constructed in the 1600s when it got taken over by the 19th owner of this place. Then they decided to rebuild the castle, make a courtyard and you can also see up there we have some storage for the wine production that later happened in this place. Let me show you this courtyard in a bit more detail. Look how, how enormous this place is. It's just crazy. You could just sit outside, enjoy the nice breeze here in Italy. They even had a well in the middle of the courtyard here. I can, can't unfortunately look into it. It's sealed up by this tire. And as you can see, they are trying to renovate this place. They place scaffolding all around it in an attempt to yeah, undo what already has been happening, nature taking over. I unfortunately think that this place in its state right now is almost not savable. I think in the 16, 1700s, when labor was cheap, then this place could be easily restored. But now when work is so expensive, almost undoable there's even no window in there anymore at the top that's so sad to think about that this place will slowly crumble apart and turn into a big pile of rubble over the next hundreds of years here was the entrance door of the place grand entrance where the people came inside of the castle. But now it's time to first go into the basement because that's where the company was. That's where the wine production happened. And there are also some other interesting parts that I have to show you about this basement. Well, the stairway is very difficult to walk on, <laughs> I must say. room you're ending up in oh yes these are the wine holding tanks they are numbered 39 38 37 oh well, we have a calendar over here from the year 2006 i didn't know yet when this place got abandoned but now i have some sort of a clue a reference they are actually very modern tanks so they produced wine in here for a very long time and rows of wine tanks all throughout this basement they're most likely all empty let's open one up 
little beak inside. There's nothing in there anymore. Beautiful to see every single piece of equipment that was used for producing the wine is still in here. All the hoses, all the jacks, lamps, cables, they left everything behind. Privato, private it says. Then I'm going to enter inside and it's just this general storage area. nothing anymore oh, what a place but we can still go lower into the basement down the stairway oh here on the walls we can see some pictures of how it looked like when this place was in operation fascinating and these are the grape fields surrounding the castle up there we can even see the castle on top of the mountain so all the grapes would be collected and brought to the castle Okay, we're now going to end up in the lowest floor of this place. First wanna go to the left here. And these are a bit more ancient parts of the castle. I even read online that there used to be a sort of a prison in this basement. So we're gonna try to find it. Look at the thousands of bottles of champagne and wine. They produce the variety of, of different types of wine. So they have lots of different brands that they produced. Maybe the prison is over here. This looks like some sort of prison. I think what we are seeing is the prison cell. Okay. <laughs> oh, I've never seen a prison inside of an abandoned castle. So many artifacts left behind. These are most likely some full bottles of wine. Yeah, they still have contents. Wow. Hundreds of bottles of unsold wine. Once upon a time, the card boxes were around these, but over the years, they have deteriorated. These ones haven't even been labeled yet. They are completely filled with wine. I actually would have loved to taste one of these wines, but unfortunately, as my explorer heart says, never take anything from an abandoned place. Little encavement in the wall. Go to the right. Let's see what's on that side. As you can see, the electricity still functions in this place. It's turned on even. You can see the two lights over here. But on this panel, it's all turned off. You can see the cobwebs right next to it. And over here, we have another part the storage area for all the wines. Let's make our way back up the stairway. Let's film the remainder of this place. When this castle got constructed in the early 10th century, it was only a fraction of the size what it is right now. Over its 1000 year history, the castle was remodeled and parts added left and right. It is believed that it has been remodeled at least 15 times. A magnificent display of medieval architecture, the building rises five levels around the central courtyard. Its high walls protect it from attacks on the outside, while keeping life pleasant on the inside. Every single room is uniquely decorated and in total, the entire place consists of more than 40 rooms. 
The castle is a true masterpiece of Italian architecture and design. documentary, we will also discover that there are multiple hidden tunnels beneath the castle. In the more early and violent years of its existence, the tunnels probably served as escape routes. I just came out of the basement, back into the courtyard, and I literally smelled the rain. That's such a nice smell. And this is a very rare occasion for Italy because it doesn't rain that much over here. Wow, the rain dripping on the plants in here, the smell. I can already feel that the next part of this video is gonna be incredible. So let's waste no more time. Right in front of me here is, to my opinion, the most beautiful part and beautiful room of this entire castle. This is the main part, the living part of this place. Let's go in there. This room has been constructed together with the courtyard in the 1600s. A medieval room with the arches, the pillars and everything you would expect from a room like this. Wonderful. I love it that there is literally no electricity in this place. The only thing you have is these chandeliers. I think there are about 30 candle holders on there. And we have four of these chandeliers throughout the room. And on these chandeliers, there would be 30 candles, so 120 in total. Imagine how that must have been like oh, back in that time period, sitting in a room like this in the evening, enjoying yourself with a cup of coffee. That's always something that I like to do when I'm exploring these places, just relive the memories of somebody sitting there drinking a cup of coffee in front of the fireplace. It's a very nice setup here. We've got some upholstery chairs around the coffee table. It's a nice little rug on there. Beautiful colors. And then we have a service trolley to the side. Wow. This fireplace is literally enormous. It's 400 years old, like I told you before. And you can see how enormous it is from the blocks of wood that had to be placed inside of it. They're still in there. Some blocks of wood that have never been let up. Peacock feathers above it, a very nice touch because this castle is totally surrounded with peacocks everywhere. They are like the icon of this castle. Oh, this is very sad to see. We got this wonderful plate here on the floor, shattered in pieces. And right next to it, a knight's armor. The first knight's armor ever that I've seen on this channel. I've seen gloves, I've seen other things of a knight, a knight armor like a helmet, but here I see a full knight armor, and for, unfortunately without the helmet. But still a very nice piece to find. Look at the meticulous design that's on here. We see a knight riding a horse on a battlefield, slaying a dragon down below there. Wow. It must have been very difficult to battle with such an armor that's very heavy, very a lot of strain on the body. I would not want to do it, definitely not. And on this side of the room, we have the spears from the battlefield, presumably before the 1600s. These were used to conquer lands and conquer castles. They might have had blood on them that has been washed off and displayed over here. It's a very scary thought actually. And on this wall we can see all the diplomas that the former owners of this place achieved throughout their lifetime. It's fascinating to see. You can see that this is the diploma for a doctorate of Giorgio. I'm not going to go too close on that one because you can most definitely reveal the location from that piece. 
wonderful. Even a bottle of frosty wine left here. And then right in front of me, we have the chess set up. So the owners of this place would play some chess back in the evening around this chess table. Even got a candle on there that they could carry around. Love these upholstery chairs that we have around it. And then more spears on the wall from the battles that have been conquered over the years. This is such an enormous room, everybody. Wow, the ceilings are at least four or five meters high. Four pillars in the middle of it, excuse me, three pillars. This is one of the largest rooms that I've ever been in, inside of a castle. Fascinating. With more than a thousand years of history, this place has. And here we can look outside through the beautiful backyard of this place. Back in the time, these used to be wine fields, but later on, they have been converted. They have been taken over back by nature. Such a nice view. Wow. And here on the wall, we got an ancient sword. This has most definitely not been used in a battle. It's just too big for a piece. It's just an art piece. Let's see what we got more on this side. A map of the castle. Oh, we are currently in this room. We still have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven rooms to cover before we are done with the downstairs floors. That's how big this castle is. And some more things to this side. One last overview of this meticulously beautiful room, and then we will move on further to the other rooms. And now welcome you all into the leisure room of this castle, where games would be played, where cognac would be drunk, and where these people just have a good time. You can also call this the man cave. This is such a wonderful room, everybody. And by far here in front of me, the biggest billiards table that I've ever seen. I saw another one in an abandoned castle that was almost as big as this one. I will link it up here in the annotations. But this one is just massive. And for hundreds of years in the past, people used to play around this table and have a good time. You can literally still see them standing over there playing a game of billiards. Wow, fascinating. I love the wood that has been used to construct this table. It has four pillars down below there. Let's look at it in closer detail. Got a lovely painting of one of the former owners here on the wall. A typical Italian man with the mustache and a lovely artwork. Depictions of peasants, Italian peasants back in the day, having a dinner in front of the fireplace. Typical Italian town. Italy is such a wonderful country with deep history and I just, I, I totally fell in love with it. The first time I came over here to explore these places. Behind this couch, we have the counter for the score that the people achieved with their game. Okay, this moves from the wall, so I'm not gonna go and touch it anymore. All the cues are stored in here. Nice little uh, display. Uh, can display something up here. Now we have these lovely upholstery chairs underneath there. And of course, not to forget, in this room, there was also a fireplace to give it some character and light. 
into the light of the room. Are these candle holders here in front? No, they are not candle holders. Excuse me. And then we have something else here on the wall. These look like scripts. This one says 1338. It's definitely, it's just a picture, but they look like scripts from back in that time period. They were all displayed here on the walls. Ah, oh. oh, this is a booklet that's filled with the names of wine. Etical de Delcolio, Pignot, Pignot Blanco. Okay, and here are prices for wines. That's so interesting. <laughs> and even a doodle of somebody drinking a bottle of wine. Lovely. And some more scripts. And then when you were done playing your pool game, you could look out of the window. And then from the leisure room, we walk straight into the next dining room, the second dining room. And this is actually the day-to-day -day dining room that they used most likely. So let's have a look at it. The way I can tell that this is the day-to-day -day dining room is that it is not designed on a ceiling and owners of a castle would most likely always put their guests in the most fancy rooms they possessed. Wonderful table, still made after all those years. The plates are still on there. You can see it has been collecting dust over those years. Wow. Some upholstery chairs. Here in the corner, lovely yellow. And then we have the Colosseum hanging here on the wall. The pride is possession of Rome. And this lovely cabinet right next to it. I can see that there are some seashells carved into this one. There's actually a very nice touch that they put into this one. You can see the exposed wood and the symmetry of the wood and this piece as well. That's just fascinating. Let's see if there's anything left. No, it's just some random things in the cabinet. Oh, there's also a, a Christmas tree in this room. What's that doing there? <laughs> Maybe this place got abandoned around Christmas time. And this is one of those trees where there's like this snowy powder on top of there. A picture of another castle. Wow. Oh, I love this corner piece. This corner display table. Lots of man hours have been put into making this one as well. Wonderful. Wonderful, everybody. And every single room, of course, looks over the courtyard. It would be such a nice piece sitting here, looking outside. Oh, there are some other chess pieces from the chessboard that we saw over there. Hmm. Okay, and now you're all going to be blown away. <sighs> it's now time for the next part of the castle, and that's this lovely dining room again, and third dining room in this place. They seem to have switched dining rooms a lot, Maybe one for breakfast, maybe one for dinner, maybe one for supper. Who knows? This is one of the most beautiful rooms in this place. And I'm going to show you why I love it so much. First and foremost, it starts with this corner. This one has just character. A sofa with another smaller one right next to there. And a stove in the corner that's completely burned over the years. But what catches my attention the most in this room is this picture that we have over here. There's two women sitting together and a young boy is playing violin for them. And that's an exact representation of this corner. This picture is made here. <sighs> Wonderful to see. Former inhabitants this place. I was also looking at the stove and I was wondering why it was burned like that. 
Let's see, there are some ashes down here. Somebody lit up a fire in between here and it's red over there. A chimney leading out of the castle. And then we have this lovely wall clock. With the clock face still present in there. I always have to look in every single cabinet to see if we can find any clues about the former inhabitants. Lovely crown molding above the doorway leading into the other room. Wow. And then we have a collection of seashells over here on this display table. This is most likely from a very big mussel. Interesting. Oh, look at this copper plate. Wow. A very big clam down here. And this is most likely for the castle at dusk. You can see oh, the sun setting in the background. A wonderful picture of this place. And then, of course, we are in Italy. We always have to look at the ceilings in these places. You can see there are thousands of stars displayed on the ceiling of this room. And all the studs around there. And then we have the dining table right in front of us here. And as you can see, there are six chairs around this table. And that tells us something about the size of this family. So Carlos, the last owner of this place and the head of the family, together with his wife Lily and his children, used to dine over here. I've seen a castle in Italy with, about 20, with, about, with a very big dining table and about 20 chairs. And in that castle lived way more people. The grandfather lived there and some uh, relatives and some family members all used to live there. But it seems like over here only a small family used to reside. Lovely mirror above there, some light fixtures. And again, we can see that it all has been added on later. The cables are running everywhere throughout the castle. Wow. Rock collection. They seem to have had something with seashells. You can see them, see them all throughout this place. A lovely cabinet with some artworks above there. An angel fallen from heaven and landed here on this cabinet. Ooh. Got some more artifacts in here. A little laser pointer. Some stamps from this place, date stamps, and it's locked on 1969. What did I? I fell something on the ground. Let's put it back nicely. Some glasses that would be served with drinks to the guests of this place. And over here, we got another collection of rocks and seashells. Those are some fascinating pieces. They're probably also very expensive. I don't know much about these things, but I assume that they are very expensive. This is a doorway that leads to the courtyard. So it could have been opened up and you could walk straight into the courtyard. Let's see if that's still possible nowadays. Seems to be locked right now. I have to pull this lever down. No, it doesn't want to open anymore, unfortunately. And let's go further to this side of the room, where we have another display cabinet with a doll of a child above here. So, oh, this is a plastic doll. I thought it was a porcelain doll. Magnificent 
display cabinet underneath there. Got a picture of a man here as well. An Italian description on there from 1965. Some other artifacts as well. This cabinet, some jerks and some other stuff. Lovely open fireplace right next to it here. And the great designs coming back everywhere in this place. Wonderful. Holy water from Lourdes. And another wall clock here to the side. Oh, and here the peacock design comes back. So peacocks had something to do with this castle. Maybe they have been here for all this time. You can see above there, we can also see the peacock design in the clock face, carved out in copper. Wow. What's this man holding? Oh, this, this uh, statue has broken. It's unfortunate, but he seems to be some sort of a worker. There are some shovels down there. Here we see these armored ladies, fighters, soldiers. They actually look quite sexy, I must say. <laughs> this looks like a vanity. With a mirror above. Beautiful designs at the crown. And this household had also something to do with war. You can see it all throughout. It has been involved in war over the last 1000 years that this place has been, has been built and has been here. You can see this man wearing an army uniform. It seems like an Italian army uniform. Here is an older picture of a soldier. Carlos meeting, meeting with some fellow businessmen. Wonderful designed cabinet. Display table, excuse me, over here as well. And this seems to be like an encaving in a wall with wooden branches in there. Wow. Some sort of an art displayment with the sofa down below. You could just relax here at night and enjoy yourself. One last overview of this entire room. And by far one of the most fascinating rooms in this grand castle. And that leads us into the next part of this castle. I'm excited to show you this one. Welcome inside. Oh, the first thing that I'm going to get you to have a look at is the ceiling. Oh, again, I can't stop looking at the ceilings here in Italy. And this one has also the initials on the family, the family on there, the grapes and the music and all the things that this family stands for. Even the swan that's down in the pond. with a lovely chandelier hanging here in the middle of the room, giving it character, giving it love. A picture of a former inhabitant also left here and a mirror above there. An artwork most likely made by one of the inhabitants of this place. Looks like a self-made artwork. And this is a diploma from 1934 and it's even written in my language. Algemene Wereldentolstelling, the General World Exposition, it says on there. And it's for Monsieur La Commande Romano. Wow. 
beautiful. In my own country, he got this diploma. A wonderful stove right next to it. Love the white tile to the side of it. Castel Monte. Leading out of the castle is the chimney. <laughs> if I could ever explore a castle the size of this one, yeah, then I have to make a whole series about this place. <laughs> right in front of us here, we have another grand mirror. Wonderful displayment. Beautiful gold plating to the sides. And here are the smoking pipes of Mr. Carlos. Wow. You could have multiple smoke, uh, smoking pipes standing upright in here like this. People used to smoke a lot more back in that time. I think these are lighting rods for the smoking pipes. A special piece of furniture only for smoking. Mountainside depicted over here. Then a rocking chair right in front of it. I love this chassis long that we have over here. Wow, such a nice piece. I have to lay down in it and test it out for you all. So this was just a resting place, a resting couch, a chassis long actually where people could take a nap, read a book, and they would just... This is actually a very comfortable chair to be in, and yeah, I can see myself relaxing in this one, just winding down from the day, having a nice glass of drink next to me, and just sipping away and dreaming about big things. I didn't show you these pictures that we have here above the Chasse Long. This lovely girl, and this drawing. To this side, it's also very nice. And we have another one of this woman. And this lovely copper lamppost right next to it. Wow. Everything in a castle like this has been thought about. The curtains, the ceiling, the wallpaper, every single detail counts. And that takes us into another room. And this one is a heaven bedroom, as I like to call it. It's a single bedroom, presumably again, of a child that slept here. And it used to be a curtain that draped down over the bed, giving that impression of a heaven bed that you can rise up. I love the style of this bedroom. Again, a wonderful ceiling, flowers, birds and everything is on there. And this is most likely a girl's bedroom. We have an enormously beautiful vanity to this side where she could make herself beautiful in the morning. Everywhere throughout this place there are these plastic, plastic uh, fruits left behind. I don't know why they are all here but uh, <laughs> there are plastic fruits everywhere. Is this another vanity? Yeah, yes, it is. Wow. This is in the same style as the cabinet that we have over on the other side of the room. A marble top. Some rocks in here. You have seen rocks all throughout this place. And of course, Italy was and still is very religious. We see religious symbols at like the holy water and these displayments of Jesus Christ and Maria all throughout the castle, even above the bed. A wonderful bed right here in front of us, still made after all those years. Sort of a gold orange bed cover. I really like it. I would have loved to be a child in a house like this, in a castle like this. It must have been wonderful to live here and have all the amenities that you could ever dream of. Not 
a wonderful vanity with carvings in there. Some bottles of perfume left behind. Magreffe Eau de Toilette from Paris. You can still smell it until here. Upholstery chairs everywhere. Wow. And this cabinet is also quite fascinating. Mmm, sheep's wool, sheep's wool rug we have over here. Francesco Rosa Spina, 1800, it says on this paper. Okay, and I see that there is another doorway right behind here. This, the wallpaper just flows through over this doorway. We can open it up. Oh, it goes inwards. And that reveals the bathroom of this place. Ooh, and also some decorative items. Definitely from Christmas time. We already saw a Christmas tree. It's this picture right behind here. Very colorful tree somewhere. Okay. Peacock feather again on the floor. And we're now ending up in the bathroom. This is the shower encavement with a former owner that lived here. Could take his showers right from his room, of her room. And then we have the toilet arrangement with a toilet, a bidet. And again, another vanity. How many vanities can you have in one room? Then of course, we she could brush her teeth, do her makeup, must have been wonderful. And here you can look out over the gardens of this castle. It's still raining outside. I can literally keep filming this place. I can literally keep filming this place forever. There are so many things to look at. And I don't want to stop filming it. I want to keep looking at all these things and go through it. I think I'm gonna sleep here tonight and just film it in the morning again. Let me show you the ceiling one more time, but then in greater detail. But luckily we are still not done yet. We still have a few rooms to cover and let's waste no more time and let's go in them. I'm so excited to show you the remainder of this place. And here we end up in another sort of dining area. A wonderful dining table here in the middle. But what catches your attention when you get into this room is the ceiling. Just have a look at the artworks that have been put on here by the artist in 1860. It most likely took him years to complete this. And have a look at it, it's sort of a pattern. Winter time here in front of us, autumn time. Yes, this, these are the seasons displayed on the ceiling. Oh, this is summertime you have over here. And then to end off, of course, we have also spring to this side. Wow, that's totally lovely. And I can see some other things in the ceiling as well. For example, the castle depicted over here, the corner of the room, these angels drawing a castle or a palace. And we have another depiction of the castle. Oh, they are also, they also rotate with the seasons. It's the castle on every single season. Wow. Angels playing music. And here's the castle in another season. Just amazing. The person that created this was truly a master of art. Wow. Let's go through this room and let's see what more we can discover inside of it. And we have these waivers over here as well. Maybe for the servants to cool down the occupants of this castle, Carlos and his family. Le Bonheur de ce monde. Oh, this is a French poet. Okay. 
an enormous Chinese min vase down there and a wooden lock. Why is this wooden lock here? I have no clue. Unfortunately, this place has also been involved in war times. We can see here three Italian soldiers, most likely in World War II, and they were aligned with the Nazis. I'm not gonna judge them, it's just a picture, but uh, that's reality, everybody. Those things also happen in these castles. Lovely candle over here on top of the fireplace. We've got the fireplace itself, a wonderful piece of art in front of it. Hmm. Nice manner on this one as well. And the fireplace here in the corner of the room. There's only a triple stacked fireplace, and like the other one that's dead. It's fifth times five stacks of chimneys on top of each other. They all end up in the same chimney. Another diploma over here as well. Wow. Invenzione. Invention. Oh, that's invention in Italy, but I'm not sure what it fully reads. It's from 1923 uh, and it's from Romano. Romano, maybe also an inhabitant of this place. Wow. More artworks all above here. Got this picture of these two children together with their horses. Why is this cord here? That's no purpose, I think. It's amazing. And then we have this cabinet. The picture of a man inside. This was maybe Carlos himself. It even has this stamp at the bottom that makes it legitimate. Another picture as well. And this one. Very interesting to find. So this was another dining area or another sitting area to have some drinks, most likely. The big library, big bookshelf here to the right as well. Ooh, different types of marine knots are displayed in here. And of course, numerous encyclopedias. Book of the Year, 1963, 1962, Dictionary, World Languages. Oh, that's crazy. Let's close this up. Let's see what we have down below here. Even more books on different topics. Italian culture. Oh, I love also the design in this bookcase. Alpine mountain range. And one last time, this very beautiful ceiling. I'm gonna show you this. Wow. Those seasons on there just blew my mind. Such an awesome idea to put on a ceiling. And I believe right next to me here, we have another bedroom that I have to show you. Oh, a teddy bear of one of the children. Some booklets. Oh, and this is a picture from the outside of the castle. Look at that. <gasps> Look what I found, everybody. This is totally amazing. This is the dining hall of the castle. The hall that we first entered into with all the candle lights. Wow. And this is the courtyard right above there. That's a fascinating piece to find. And then we have a double bedroom in here with numerous documents displayed on the bed. Look at this. It's a war helmet and some designs of the castle from the arches and the construction of this place. A box for chocolates. Look at this. This is just meticulous. We have this in Pearl Street box and it's just for fine chocolates. 
and it's for Maria and for the 25th of December 1914. So this was most likely a Christmas present for somebody back in that time period. Wow. Can you imagine how much work it must have been to make this box and then you just fill it up with chocolates. More designs of the castle. If you want, you can reconstruct this place from the designs that are here. And scripts and everything is on top of this bedroom. Ooh. I'm not sure how you call this, but this is also a piece from Christmas time. We call the Kerstal in Dutch, but I'm not sure about the English name, the English pronunciation. Wow. So this place definitely got abandoned around Christmas time. And that's a very sad reality. Triple, a quadruple stack stove right in front of me here. And that ends off this bedroom. Wow. Maybe I find some more things over here. Let me just look a little bit further. Some more designs of the crown molding that has been placed into this castle. Statues and everything. Okay. See that there is one more room down here. Where does this end up in? Some storage rooms at the end of the castle. More Christmas decoration, more wrapping paper, and all kinds of things are here. A Christmas star right over there. We have one less small part of this castle to cover. That's this side of the courtyard. There are a few rooms here. And of course, we're gonna go to the tower of this place. Let's go. And as you can see again, I've not shown this in full. The construction is happening here. I want to show you also a bit more about this courtyard. The clock face over here has probably been here. Hours, hours of departure. It's been here for a long time. And it's most likely from a train company. A lantern here in the middle of the courtyard. And I'll show you that entrance a bit more in detail. Oh, they even had a hall tree on that side to hang up your clothing here in the entrance hall. Wow. Lovely to see. Okay. It hasn't has luckily stopped raining. Oh, I should say it has unfortunately stopped raining now because I really loved it. But uh, yeah, we have to go out soon and then it's nice that it's not raining anymore. Okay, we've got a few rooms over here. Some general storage areas of the castle. Maybe for the workers. We've got some wine up here, some other tools. Just a general selection storage you can see some sugar and other stuff there oh and a very big pile of wood right here for all the fireplaces that were in this castle because of course there was no central heating before the 1800s maybe even before the 1900s i'm not 100 percent sure but they needed a lot of wood to fuel all the fireplaces in this castle wow Look at this fountain that we have on this side. I think they added on the faucet later. At first it was just the head spouting out water. And then this faucet has been added on at a later date. And it's fully made out of marble. Wow, this is a lovely piece. Oh, and then we have some toilets over here as well. Okay. Even some shampoos and everything still left in here. And I think this courtyard and this castle in late 19th, late 19th century was used as a venue for the wine production and to show showcase their products to uh, yeah, interested buyers, most definitely. Okay, and then we have this stairway that's gonna take us up 
to the other floors. We have one other part here, that's this. Oh yes, we have not seen a kitchen yet in this place, and most likely the kitchen is gonna be over here. This is where the servants used to work. Lots of junk and trash, as you can see. A radio, some other things. Okay, what do we have over here? An accountancy desk and some film roll as well. That's very interesting. Nothing of interest is on there. Oh my god. What kind of room do we have here? Ooh. This seems very interesting. Okay, this goes down all the way with the stairway. It's very sketchy. Very, very sketchy. Oh, and we end up at a front porch. At a porch where you could go out of the castle. Maybe a secret exit way out of this place. Oh, and we even have some barrels in here. Some wine production barrels. And this leads into another basement. Wow. The tunnel system underneath this castle is incredible. We already saw the basement itself with all the wine production. And then we still have this basement where maybe the, maybe the most expensive wines of this castle westward. Wow. We even have a few bottles of wine left behind here and touched. And there are numerous spiders all over the wall in here. Luckily, I'm not scared of spiders, but there are literally hundreds. No, they, these are not spiders. Oh, oh my God, it jumped right on me. I don't know what kind of animals these are. I think they are jumping spiders. <laughs> I feel it. Okay, I'm gonna go out of this basement. Even though I'm not scared of spiders, they, <laughs> they scare me a little bit, I must say. We're back in the servants' room. I think the kitchen is on that side. Let's have a look. I can see some fridges, some other things. Oh no, this was just the laundry room. Oh, down below here is the kitchen. But first, let's have a look at this room. All the laundry is still left here. And even all the fridge magnets from the places that these people have traveled to. New York, Lake Powell, all in the United States. And we end up over here in the kitchen of the place. A very ordinary kitchen, as you can see. And most likely the servants would be working in here and preparing meals for the owners of the castle. Wow. Everything is still in here, untouched, like the day they left it behind. And even, of course, because we are in Italy, there is a pizza oven in this kitchen. I wouldn't have expected anything else. I just skipped that door to the right there. And that was a bad choice, because I already suspected it, but there is a basement in here as well. So are we already going down the third basement in this place? Oh yes, I just saw this little window here and that leads into yet another basement of this castle. Oh, interesting. Very small one over here as well. Oh, more stairways leading down. This is like a labyrinth going through here. And there again, all the spiders are on the walls. This is just scary to see. Oh, there's a bat. There's a bat right here. Have to be a bit careful. Oh my god. This goes on and on. Underneath the castle. Where am I gonna up end up in? Not a little dungeon room filled with these types of spiders.
might this have been the prison? I'm gonna open it up. If I can. It seems really rusted. Okay. Didn't think I can. No, I can't open it up, unfortunately. But wow, what an adventure. Oh my god, there's a tunnel system underneath the castle. Very fascinating. <sighs> oh my god, there's a severed animal. Squirrel, I think, here on the floor. I'm not gonna go too in detail. Oh, that smells really bad. And there are more tunnels underneath here even. Of course, we are gonna check this out. If we can, of course. This hasn't been opened in a very long time. Oh, my light fell down. That was a bit scary. My camera just fell. My light, the battery popped out of it. I had no light anymore. I had to crawl like this because, of course, the basement was open. Okay, let's try to open it up. It hasn't been opened in a very, very long time. And then we're gonna go inside and see what it has to be old. I'm crazy for doing these things. I'm literally crazy. But that's what I love to do. Most likely it's gonna be a dead end. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. There's another tunnel system underneath the castle. Wow. Oh. It's just for plumbing, unfortunately. But it could have been something else, so I never leave a chance. Okay, let's go back. Ooh, what an adventure, everybody. Ooh, there's so many animals in here. <sighs> Let's go back out of this basement. Because I can, I think I can go in here for days and not find an entrance or an exit anymore. <sighs> okay, pretty tired of this endeavor, but uh, let's go further. It started raining again. And now it's time to go to the upper floors of this place. And that leads us to these stairways over here. Let's first take a left. Wow. There's an enormous attic spanning up more than 10 meters in front of me. Unbelievable. Some sort of storage area for the wine production maybe, and some other general stuff that was used throughout the castle. I see a doorway over there. That leads again into some sort of a storage area. Oh my God, look at this room with the ceiling. That's just amazing. It looks like a chapel. Even, even some booklets in here. 1940 it said. Last few rooms in here. Okay. Let's see what's at the end here. Hmm, interesting. We have some wheat grinding machines here. Okay. Oh, and some boxes, some crates for juice, for wine. As you can see, with some wine bottles in here. All opened wine bottles. And then the last room of this attic is this one. There's one more spiraling staircase right here in front of me. And that's gonna take us up to the tower of the castle. It's gonna be a long walk because this tower is very high. Okay. Let's go up and up and up to 
until it can't go up anymore. Now doorway here. Let's push that open. Let's go further. Oh my god. I think I have to speed this part up. Okay, everybody, we arrived at the top of the castle, inside of the tower. And unfortunately it's raining, so the view isn't as nice as normal, but let me show you this masterpiece. Wow. I think it's actually still quite nice. You can overlook the whole valley. Oh, oh, oh. this is beautiful. Let me sit down and tell you that I'm just very happy, but also a little bit exhausted. This was an enormous castle and this video I know was very long, but it was well worth it. Every single room had very important details and I just loved the experience. I want to thank you all for watching this week's video. If you liked it, please like the video, write me a nice comment down there and subscribe to the channel if you're new here, because we upload videos every single week about places like these. With that all said, oh, there's one more thing. There's a link in the description for Patreon there. You can support the channel and help us out with a small donation and make these explorations possible. <sighs> Thank you very much. And I will see you next week in another episode. Bye bye. I love you very, very much.